penis sizes are shrinking, which you might have seen from these headlines all over the internet. And in the last 40 years, sperm counts in men have decreased by 50%, and the distance between the anus and the genitals in boys, aka the taint, has been shrinking. So today, we are going to explain what is going on. Testosterone levels in men have been declining since 1982. A meta-analysis of over 185 studies that looked at over 48,000 men found that between the years of 1973 and 2011, male sperm concentration had decreased by 52% and overall sperm count had decreased by 59%. 26% of men who have erectile dysfunction are now under the age of 40. Looking at sperm bank semen in 1963, one teaspoon of sperm, which is your average ejaculation, would have had 99 million viable sperm per milliliter. By 2011, it had fallen all the way to only 49 million viable sperm. And the decrease in the sperm count, sperm concentration, and viable sperm is why now male fertility issues contribute one quarter to one third of all fertility issues. And now we are starting to understand finally why this is happening. It comes down to plastics, pesticides, and the chemicals in the products that we are using every day. Plastics, pesticides, and chemicals in our products contain EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals. These chemicals can bind to hormone sites in our body and fool our bodies into thinking they're the natural hormone. Hormones are signaling molecules in your body that are a part of your amazing endocrine system. The endocrine system consists of these glands in your body that secrete hormones in order for your organs and your tissues to essentially communicate. For example, when stressed, your brain will signal your pituitary gland to release ACTH. And this pituitary gland is in your brain. No, it is is not your testicles, even though it looks like it. The ACTH enters the blood where it then makes its way to your adrenal gland. Now the adrenal gland secretes cortisol, another hormone that enters the bloodstream and then increases glucose within your body to help you deal with that stress. This is just one example of endocrine biological signaling processes, but there are many more that control how you breathe, how your digestion works, and even the sensory you feel when you touch a wall. Back to the endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs. They can also control how our natural hormones are broken down and stored. And they also change our body's sensitivity to the real hormones. So let's start with the endocrine disrupting chemicals, phthalates. These chemicals are in plastics because they make them soft and flexible. They're also in floor coverings and soap and hairspray. One study of 72 common household objects found phthalates in three quarters of the product, such as deodorant and hair gels and fragrances. So in rats, if the expectant mother is exposed to phthalates, 18 to 21 days after mating, the male pups will have a decrease in testosterone. In humans, if an expectant mother is exposed to phthalates between week 8 to 12 of the embryo's development, it can disrupt testosterone and lead to boys coming out with a decreased penis size, lower sperm counts, and a smaller ADG, a smaller taint. Now let's look at the BPA, which you may have heard a lot about. It can be found in non-stick coatings, in lots of different plastics, in electronics, and also in receipt paper. Men were Working at factories with high levels of BPA had their urine examined. It turned out that increased levels of BPA in their urine led to four times lower sperm counts three times lower sperm vitality and decreased sperm mobility. Sons of men with high BPA exposure had decreased ADGs and were more likely to have ejaculation issues and decreased sexual desire. And there are a lot of other chemicals that disrupt endocrine hormones from those in plastic toys and air fresheners, nail polish, pesticides to the grease and stain repellents in fast food containers and the dioxins found in meat and dairy, all of which have an impact on sperm count, taint size or penis length. It's not just EDCs and plastics and pesticides that are decreasing male fertility, it's also other things that we are just doing to our body. Smoking cigarettes or even just exposure to secondhand smoke can actually cause damage to our sperm. It can decrease our testosterone and decrease our ability for the little guys to make its way to the egg. And right now, men smoke five times as much as women, which is causing a decrease in male fertility. And it's not just cigarettes, sadly. Also, those marijuana smokers like me also have to look out because a 2015 study in Denmark found that smoking marijuana more than once a week led to a 29% decrease in sperm count. 
Also, curing meat with nitrites and nitrates and the chlorinated pollutants that can be found in animal meat and dairy can damage your sperm's DNA. Men who eat more processed meat have a decreased sperm count and decreased normally shaped semen. And this could be caused by the endocrine issues that these chemicals in these meats have. One thing is becoming extremely clear, which is that the chemicals we are now using in our modern world are creating a decrease in male fertility. So much so that a variety of studies have found a 1% decrease decrease in testosterone in men per year since 1982. As for what you can do right now at home, you can eat less meat and dairy. You cannot heat up things in plastic containers because that can actually have the chemicals seep into your food. You can eat less takeout and fast food as the actual packaging can be an issue in those cases, as well as the gloves that fast food workers while they're preparing your food. One study found that teenagers who ate out more had a 55% increase in some of these EDCs compared to teenagers who solely ate at home. If you do use a nonstick pan, keeping the heat low and for shorter periods of time. And if you ever see any sort of flaking on them, get rid of them. Phthalates can leach into food in processing practices and in food packaging. So eating less processed food or food with less packaging can also help. We need to regulate corporations so that they can't just use these chemicals on us. Right now, corporations can experiment with our bodies. The way that this regulation works is it's kind of innocent until proven guilty. So only when we start to realize the detrimental effects of these chemicals, do we then start to regulate them. We need to change that order. You may have seen this tweet from Greta Thunberg. I think it's rather smart and funny and we will see you at the next climate march. We need to hit the streets and hold our governments and our corporations accountable when it comes to regulating these chemicals out of our bodies. They need to keep us safe. They need to help us lead healthier lives. And we didn't even really know the effects that these chemicals were gonna have on us. And now that we do, we need to figure out how to get them out. This is really important so that we can keep all of our and if you wanna learn more, grab the book Countdown by Shanna Swan. She's sort of ringing the alarm on all of these issues. I am just helping her try and get this information out there. The book is full of amazing resources and gives you a really great understanding of what is going on here. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week for a new science video.